same person which helped your field will host the meeting in the main meeting room of your field municipal offices with remote participation details below. The dialing number is 312-626-6799. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And the passcode is 570012. Thank you for everybody for attending. So we're calling this meeting to order. And do we have any um, public comment unrelated to our agenda? Um, see I'm not. Done. Let me call you right back, Todd. Oh, is that fine? No. Oh, okay. No. Then we're going to move on to our public and uh, community discussion of the municipal parking lot, um, the Lily Lot, known as the Lily Lot. So, um, welcome. We have Jeff Squire from Butcher Design. And I think what we'll try to do, I'm, I'm so pleased that we have so many people participating. We're going to try to speak into the mics as best as possible so people can hear us online. And um, we'll have Jeff, we'll start off with Jeff doing a rough presentation. Um, and actually, I may hand the, the slide or the code over to Chris and let him introduce the project to the parents one time, and then I'll jump in at the end. and explain where we are the project and our role. So uh great. Sure, thank you. So I am going to be showing the presentation on this project, uh just so everybody's kind of out of speed on what we're going to be talking about this evening. And afterwards we're hoping to have an extended uh question, answer, and feedback section. So without further ado, I will share the screen. Can you turn a little bit? So, oh, sure. Yep. Good. Yeah. You got it. Oh, that's fine. We have, we know a little slide we can take. So, it's more important that you can see it. Okay. I just went to the wrong one. So, um, just getting started here. So, the Leary Lot is what we are principally going to be talking about tonight. Uh, the Leary Lot is located at 59 North Main Street for anybody who's not familiar with it. Uh, it's right in behind a lot of the businesses on the corner of North Main and Elm, uh, this L shaped parcel. Uh, currently, there are a couple of parking spaces in the paved area right here. That's about 5% of the lot. Another about 15% of it is gravel, and then the other 85% is dirt and uh, grass. Um, it is worth noting that this is actually two parcels. Uh, the first one, well, actually, this is in a later slide, so we'll get to it there. So, in question, it's that one and a half acre L shaped plot of land that's advantageously located in the center of downtown South Deerfield. Uh, most of it, so the long side of the L that you saw in the last slide, uh, was acquired by the town in 1996 for a total of $134,900 by a local town meeting. Uh, and that vote town meeting was to develop a municipal parking area in the village of South Deerfield. Now, it's 27 years later, we haven't seen that parking lot from the fruition yet, but that's why we're not here to say that the short side of the L was actually acquired just this past October uh, by the vote by Speckle Town Meeting. Um, it was part of a land swap uh, arrangement with Hanshaw Lumber. Um, there are still a couple of outstanding details to that transaction, but that's expected to be completed in the very near future. Uh, and proposals for the town to develop this lot have arisen in the past several years, but none of them have come to fruition. So, the previous design work, this is work that had been done by our client back in 2020, I believe. Um, they had arranged this drawing 
Um, as you can see, there are about 60 parking spaces. There are also included a couple of what they call pocket parks for green space. Um, obviously, ADA requirements for handicap parking. Um, and you can tell it's only on this parcel, the land swap had not yet been arranged at that point. Whereas now it's looking at the town is going to be able to do something with the long and the short side. So the parking, we all saw that that was what it was acquired for originally uh, 27 years ago by time meeting. Uh, so citing the insufficiency of current parking spaces, the town has long hoped to utilize the new lot for additional parking area. Um, so we'll, there's obviously the current small paved sections that are entrance to the lot, off of North Main Street, that's about 5% of the property. Uh, and that can help ensure sufficient parking for the business owners, their employees, residents and visitors, customers who currently rely on the on-street parking with, with noticed often tends to fill up during peak hours, such as meal times at the restaurants. Green space is another thing that's been mentioned quite a bit in regards to this uh, project. So the American Planning Association does state that having green space, such as community gardens, parks, or greenways, being or near your heavily traveled areas like the downtowns. Um, that can bring social, environmental, and economic benefits to an area. Uh, green spaces provide shade and they aid in temperature regulation, which incentivizes physical activity from a public health perspective. And plants can also help suppress their carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, uh, which helps with the climate goals and they help with beautification of the area. Uh, green infrastructure is another very important component of this project that we're actively working on. So the town is participating in the state's municipal vulnerability preparedness or MVP program. Uh, and what the MVP program does is provides funding and support for projects and initiatives focused on climate resiliency. Uh, Deerfield is a leader in the MVP program, and it's something that we take a lot of pride in. Uh, one of the town's fiscal year 2024 MVP projects involves the installation of three different types of stormwater management systems at this site. Uh, those include three box filters, rain gardens, and bias rails. And I've included uh, down here on the left is a picture of a three box filter that's currently on Elm Street. There were a couple of these installed um, as part of the MVP round of programming a couple of years ago. Uh, this is an example of a rain garden that's newly installed in this picture uh, by Deerfield Elementary School. And the third one is a file as well, and I included a general illustration of what that looks like. And in some ways, it's similar to a rain garden, but there are some important differences there as well. Another big portion of what this project is about is EV charging. So times are changing. Uh, a more recent development and conversations about this project that obviously wasn't really on the table in 1996 is EV charging and the potential to use it for that. Uh, one level two charger is currently at the very entrance to the lot of North Main Street. If anybody drives an electric vehicle, they may have utilized that one before. Uh, the town was recently awarded $19,130 by the Mass Department of Environmental Protection for the purpose of two level two chargers at the site. Um, and that would be a total of four charging points that people could use. So there could be up to four people charging the vehicle at the same time with the new ones. Uh, the town has also applied to a federal grant through the U.S. Department of Transportation to fund two level three fast chargers, which are getting a lot of buzz right now um, at the site, along with several other project costs that that grant could potentially cover. So we will see about that one. EV charging and what the design looks like. So the town has been working with Eversource, with Rivermore Energy, uh, and with Universal Electric um, to arrange what the ideal scenario would be for EV charging. Um, and the more that we looked at it, we did consider a couple of different ideas. Um, we reached out to some businesses in the local area and some of others. Um, and there was initially um, some of their effort towards locating the chargers closer to the entrance near where the current one is. Um, so what ended up happening logistics wise um, for a construction perspective, it ended up making more sense for us to locate under the back of the site um, along the fence right now that currently Mark takes the limit of this property. Um, this would require the installation of a new pole and a 45 kilowatt transformer, as well as a new cabinet. Um, and once this parking lot is filled in, it is likely that 
that is what the design will look like. And finally, um, a whole purpose of having this session is to hear feedback from the community. So uh, if you signed in on the sign-in sheet, you're going to be receiving an email asking you to fill out a survey of your thoughts on the projects and on this discussion session. Uh, if anybody didn't get a chance, please make sure to fill it out before you leave. Uh, your thoughts are really important, and while we can't guarantee that every request is going to be incorporated, we are going to do our best to take them into consideration um, and figure out the most mutually beneficial solution. Uh, the survey is also going to be available online on the town's website in case uh, anybody doesn't get the email they expect, or if anybody who wasn't able to make it here tonight or is attending remotely uh, wants to fill it out, um, you will be able to have access to it that way. We do ask that you give your feedback by next Friday so that we can make sure that we have all the information we need to send over to our design team, uh, which is Berkshire Design, uh, Jeff Squire here, and he is a uh, representative, he's our lead architect of this project. Um, Jeff, do you want to talk a little bit about the role here? Sure, that's great. Thank you, Chris. Um, and I probably as you be sitting behind me, I feel like I'd be keeping square in action, but um, thank you for all coming. Um, and we're yeah, honored to be back um, back here in town and, and doing some work for uh, for Deerfield. We we have a history of doing work here, and so it's a pleasure to be back. Um, our role specifically for this project was to take the current design that we developed um, in 2020, uh, develop it with um, current information into a into a bid package set and and uh, administer a bid inspection package for construction. Um, so, you know, our goal really is to take it from um, the conceptual stage to that it's at now and bring it through to fruition. And so that's um, that's our specific role for this contract. Um, Jeff had some other background. Um, we had also been engaged by the time we do some work with this kind of common. So we're familiar with that design and have also done some sort of high level master planning. Um, uh, stuff with um, the some of the other select board and other board members um, just to think about how a lot of these projects connect. Um, I think, you know, as um, you know, from my experience being involved in town with other projects, you know, there's always been a discussion of how do we connect and make all of these various projects happening in different places connect and all talk to one another. And so, you know, for us, this is really exciting because this is a tangible project that has, you know, that has money um, allocated for construction already. And so um, it can advance a little bit faster and quicker than some of the others. So in that regard, um, I think this is a great opportunity to start thinking about some of those things. Um, the status of the project right now, we've got the plans that were prepared by uh, Time Bond in 2020, um, based on these new grant funding opportunities, the MVP and the charging. Um, and obviously the feedback received tonight, the idea is to update these plans, uh, revise them, um, and bring them, uh, bring them up to, up to speed to 2023. So we have a project that works for everybody with all the different funding sources. And so we're at a juncture now where, um, to really enhance and improve the design. Um, there's some key decisions that, you know, we feel need to be made to, you know, make this the best project possible. Um, you know, real quickly, just being certain that, you know, the, the number of cars that is in that lot now is about 60 cars, I think you said, Chris, and I think that's what, um, just make sure that that's the right number that we want to target in the beginning. Um, there's certainly some opportunities for expansion, but I think settling on a minimum number of spaces to begin with, just to establish the baseline would be important, uh, an important decision. And six cars, 80 cars, you know, how many do we need, really need back there? Um, I think another uh, and almost more important question for us from a design perspective is, especially given that that short leg of the tunnel now, really thinking about where the connections want to be, not only the vehicular connections, but also pedestrian connections, is that there's an opportunity to connect this lot with um, the lot, the, the, the parking that's available behind them, the businesses that front home. And there's there's opportunities to connect pedestrians through some of those enemy ways. How does that affect the adjacent businesses? Those are those are you know small moments in the parking lot that really mean a lot. Um, so I think being really strategic and and deliberate about where those crosswalks are, where those acceptable routes are, 
um, will change um, and you know, you know, where some of those uh, pocket parts that at least were shown in the previous design may want to happen. So I think thinking about those. Um, and then lastly, um, um, there will unlikely be uh, more than likely be some remaining green space left over, particularly at the, uh, at the west end of the property and in that southern uh, portion of the leg. That um, I imagine some of that would be utilized for, for stormwater purposes, bioswales or rain gardens, but to the extent that you know additional park space, you know, one of the things I noticed that you know is lacking in downtown. Um, you know, Deerfield is is sort of a, a pocket park that's not the common in the center of traffic. It's a you know it's it's a quieter park space that has some opportunity for social engagement. It doesn't need to be a big space, but thinking about some you know some hardscape, some benches, some place that would act as a as a congregation space in that in that leftover green space. A lot of the things that Chris was talking about in the in the presentation. So just you know thinking about how that space then plays into the connections and 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 those types of items. Um, so I you know from a design and discussion standpoint, those are really the, the key questions that we've got from a design standpoint now. Um, there's a handful of technical things, information that we'll need to gather to be able to advance, you know, on our design work. Um, you know, what is soil information? There's some floating out there somewhere. We're not sure where it is. So if we can't find it, we should, you know, get that soon to inform our, our engineering, our civil engineering. Um, obviously, the results of the survey and the feedback tonight is integral to the, the design process. So, you know, we'll get, we'll get that feedback, you know, relatively quickly. Um, and then I think from you all understanding the permitting needs a little bit more, and this is something that I touched on with Chris, is you know, our contract right now really is just taking the current design through to construction, hadn't really considered site plan review or conservation. I don't think there's any conservation issues, but I imagine it probably would entail a visit to the planning board. Um, there's no reason why we can't do these concurrently. Right. Um, but just making you all aware that that's something that we need to revisit and just understand, you know, that amount of effort and what's needed for that. So, yep. um, and then in terms of schedules, I think that's, you know, that's obviously a, a key, uh, a key interest. You know, I think ideally if all this information flows in relatively quickly, um, that you know it's feasible that we could have a, a CD and a bid package re ready by mid July, um, a couple of weeks for bidding. It's not a real you know um, complicated project. There'll be some stormwater management. There'll be some paving. Some it's mostly horizontal work. Um, that you know a, a two week you know bid window is probably okay. Um, sometime uh, awarding a contract sometime early mid August, which then leads you the duration of the season, which oops, which really now goes till the beginning of December. Um, plants have been staying open. Well, where she works, the executive director was really, really smoother and never gave anyone else credit and always was, everything was all about her. Um, so optimistically, you know, it's, it's feasible that we can, we can be down to likely we can come around and do some seeking or other, you know, um, cleanup work in the spring, but um, at least you know it's feasible that all the hardscape, all the the core infrastructure could be in by this year. Um, so fingers crossed if we can keep the information flowing. I think we've got you know what we need identified, and this conversation will certainly influence that. Uh, so yeah, that's that's sort of where we're at, and and very interested in, in the feedback we get tonight. Okay. Yeah. Just say a, a couple of words. I'm really excited about the project. We've been thinking about it a long time. And this was a part of our ARPA um, allocation because we want to do something that really affected the majority of the residents in town and made a big impact, you know, downtown the long term. Um, walking the site tonight a little bit before I came over just to get my my thought on things. There are it seems like it's a flat area, but there are some different elevations there. And I, Gianni Bates, uh, the owner, was outside, so I got a chance to talk to him a little bit. He couldn't be here tonight, but um, you know, he talked about you know be okay to kind of have some walkway through his parcel out onto Elm, so we kind of have those conversations. And then there's you know there are residents back there, so it's you know they have backyards, so 
how do we kind of make sure that they have some privacy and then still have um, you know enough space for them to have green space and then um, and I would just my thoughts on the project not that they need to go anywhere but just thinking about it um, we have the parking lot come, coming in and I envision spaces for for green space for people to gather um, and and split up the parking so it wasn't just all asphalt you know all the way around so we had places for parking, places for picnic tables, and then hopefully if the businesses out back want to kind of do something in their area, they kind of lead on to that green space area. So so maybe in that back corner was more green, and then we had a, a, a bit more parking going out onto Elm. But um, I'm so curious to think what everybody else has to say, and especially the business owners and residents. Um, just a couple of quick things before we open it up to the people who are the most important. We want to hear from you. Um, Obviously, you're still in the tail end of a pandemic, and so outdoor space for businesses is something that we've come to appreciate. And so, to the extent that we can make it work for the businesses in town to have outdoor space that can be used in in, in weather permitted, uh, it's a good thing. And uh, and obviously, we want to work with the business owners to, to create logic of access points. Uh, it's interesting that the uh, Trevor's discussion with the owner of Jack Figs, um, you know, having a, a way to get out of the parking lot that doesn't involve you having to go all the way around one end or the other. So that's, that's something that we'll be interested to hear what people think about that as well. Leo, I, I guess yep. you need to come up to the. Yeah, I think, like standing or sitting, yeah. either one is good. And for everybody, when you open the mic, if you could give your name and address, that would be great. And we would wait at some point, we would at some point, we would vote. All I wanted to do is ask to have you bring up that image to share, because while people are talking, it would be yeah. really helpful. Sure. sure. Thank sure, you. Sure, sure. Not that one, the, the one that shows the L. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 it would be Sure. We're in the process of doing a land transfer, which was approved at last town meeting, for the, the part that comes out onto Elm. And we we then gave swapped over that that back corner section to Hamshaw, so they could have access to their yard and do things a little bit there. Then we could have access out onto Elm. So that's that is all still in the works at the moment, but we think it's going through fine. It it, it is moving. Yeah, just take time. Take time. Yeah, it's basically done, except it needs to be recorded at the Registry of Deeds, and there's a couple of impediments that Hank Shaw is working on to clear that up so it can be recorded, but all the votes have been taken and the papers have been signed. Yeah. To um, so if you can come up, identify yourself, we'd love to hear people talk about this. Nikki, stop sure. working. <laughs> can I just go over here first, though? So, yeah, of course. Okay. Sure. Yeah. so yeah. my name is Jennifer Francesca Market. Been down here five years. I see a lot of people. I hear a lot of complaints. I just have a couple things that I think. Well, so I want to point here first. Okay. You can take the mic. I just point so you guys know what, especially if you decide. I just want to throw in one. There you go. So right here, right now, is the handicap spot, and there's grass that's here. Okay. This is. Oh, sorry. Did I do that? Oh, that's what I did. <laughs> so that spot there where that grass is right in here in the beginning yeah. um, is not good. That grass, it should be straight black up, especially in the winter time when people are trying to park there for handicap accessibility. They, there's a lot of times it's not like there's water and ice going into that area. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you have your EV there. And then you said you're going to put the other ones over here, which I think is a great option because um, because when you have it here now, you have people that come in and people are walking, they're parking and they're walking here, but you have like customers that are like in and out. Right. And so they don't want to walk like way down here. But when you're having this EV here, I think it's a lot better. 
Right. And then the la the other thing that I say is because right in here there's grass too, yeah. and there's a, our parking lots here and that parking lots there. I think it would just be a better design if there was a sidewalk right along that whole thing there. Yeah. Other than that, I'm yeah. very happy with the green spaces, and I think everybody will be. And yeah. the amount of parking. Great. Yeah, but I think you need it like on both ends. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Great. And then you might have a more space down on the dairy spot. Yeah. Because people would be happy to go to dairy spot and then. Yeah. So that's, that's my right. thought. That's what we're hoping. Um, Jerry, would you like to come up and say hi to Jerry? Yeah, you can do it. That was the time, Jerry. Uh, my name is Jerry Bogoff. I'm with the Tribune Company. Uh, we've been here next year for 30 years. Um, thank you, Jerry. Well, thank you all. It's been a wonderful community to be part of. Uh, this dream has been going on since 2020. <laughs> and on. Uh, this gentleman here, Jeff, sounds like he's ready to pull the trigger. Um, We've never seen a drawing. We've never had a group. I mean, Chris and Casey came to me a couple weeks ago. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. But I, I think, you know, I, I, I'm 110% behind this. Uh, and I like to look at, it, look at it as a parking lot park. Right. And we're looking for that green space. We're looking for something. Downtown definitely needs some parking. There's no way on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday night that you can find a place anywhere. So it, it's, it's definitely a long time in the make. It's a perfect opportunity. But as Nikki was saying, you know, she's got her things. And, and I really feel that if you want to make this really green, then you should go to all the business owners and see what they would like to do. And because I think if everybody gets behind it, all the restaurants could incorporate some outdoor dining. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Johnny uh, has his own vegetable garden there. Yes. Summer to, to grow the restaurant. Uh, we would like to put in an outdoor beer garden in our back corner there. And we would like to integrate our opening with what the town has going. And when uh, Chris and uh, Casey came to me, they had explained that all the uh, charging units were going to be right in front of where we may want to have that entrance. So um, I'm wondering if you know everybody ought to just take a step yeah. back here and and get everybody's thoughts. Um, I think it's more than just, you know, uh, just a big maintenance unit where uh, it's certainly going to be uh, the storm drainage and, and things like that have to be integrated in, but that's going to be great space and that can be tied into uh, some of the needs of some of uh, the people who abut this property. So, can you show where you're your, your opening thing? Yeah, it should pop right out. Well, I believe this is BBC right here. Yes. Yeah. And as you can see, we've got a little bit of green still left here, which is uh, her zoning. Uh, but we'd like to take and incorporate this area. Uh, all this stuff would be moved over to the other side. Uh, but the entrance would be somewhere along here. Along the fence line. Um, but I believe that's where uh, Chris is. That where the charging stations were going to be originally. I, what, we can bring up yeah. the pictures. Sorry, sorry. Sure. Yeah, I'll move that slide. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, that's, that's exactly what this is for. Right. Yeah. Out. If that's going to be in your way, we, we may need to look at something else. So, or, well, it has been noted that there is a little bit of flexibility um, in terms of these orange boxes are 
they are drawing, but they are susceptible to being shifted a little bit in either direction, not set in stone right there. Um, but it is mostly certain that they are going to be somewhere on this section of the property at this point. Um, why why would that? Why? Because of the drawings that have already gone and been approved by Eversource, um, as well as the logistics of as the rest of the parking lot is being done. Um, if there were EV construction going on over here, uh, it's predicted that it would have been more of a challenge to deal with. Well, could it go? Could they go on the opposite side of the parking lot? Yeah. That would have presented a challenge with these residential units right here. Um, there probably would have been part of construction lights shining on their windows. Um, Chris, do you know where they're going to feed these from? So the new uh, utility pole right here, this yellow circle, is going to lead to a new cabinet with a new transformer over here um, on this end. So not quite up against the fence. I think the fence is a little further to this side. Um, but it's going all the way across the lot to get to the other side to get there. So the um, the new utility pole is going to be linked by wire to existing utility poles on North Main Street, uh, and they would be running conduit underground to the new transformer and the new cabinet. Uh, yeah, I don't understand why we can't come on the other side of here. The, so when you say the other side, um, let me stand up and show you. Sure. I mean, the whole idea of this project was hoping that it, hoping that Gary would eventually want to develop. Where am I now? Oh, uh, would want to develop this area for the beer garden, and we'd have green space at this end. Um, we had parking coming in, stopping some green and maybe some parking on the way out. Um, but the idea is to is to open up this. And if we're blocking this with parking, that really doesn't serve our purpose of what we're doing. Uh, I mean, the idea was to have, I thought that the, the, the EV charging was down where it already was, or I understand leaving some space for people who are coming in and coming out real quickly to, uh, so, so maybe on, but we'll, you know, flipping this to this side, um for for some EV so you don't have to run this all the way over here it can all be on this this uh, south side square put it to that other side of that square oh who's got the screen thank you like if you put it to the other side of that green square that would be perfectly fine because that that side, but it's away from where it wants that. Like right there. Right there, there's a three-line Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That side would be good. We can definitely discuss the possibility of shifting it because I know that definitely was mentioned that these orange locations aren't set in stone. They mm -hmm. could be moved a little to the east of where they are now. Um, I, I think they do have to be in this portion because the Eversource Make Ready application that has been approved. Um, which is tied to some of our grant funding um, is contingent on this setup. Um, but yeah, there is a little bit of flexibility. Yeah. It's, not worth, it's not worth having um uh, yeah, it's not worth having them if they're gonna be in the way of Gary's um spot. Right. So right. and, and we do want to tie nicely into the new location of the beer garden on this property. Um mm -hmm. And ideally, if we could have it tie directly into green space here, but also have, for example, some EV charging stations uh, leading to EV drivers, maybe having a front row seat to parking for getting into the beer garden from this side, I think something like that could be Is, is this already passed? No, 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 no. Yeah, I would just add that, you know, from, from our standpoint, I know this is sort of running on a separate you know, parallel track to our design work. But, you know, to me, this indicates that the, the idea is that most of this stuff will go over there somewhere. If you look at the scale of the drawing, I mean, the, the charger certainly are the size of a vehicle. Right. And so this, this is really pretty schematic. And I would envision that exactly what everybody's talking about, that and you have the ability to adjust these locations such that it serves the purpose of the lot and 
all the adjacent business as well. You wouldn't, you know, I, I completely agree. I wouldn't put one of those in front of a gate to, you know, to, to some major pedestrian connection that, you know, we'll make sure we ship those to one side or try to hide the any of the cabinets or transformers and green space with some plantings or be thoughtful at least about that, you know, the location of those things that I think, you know, at least from my understanding, this is pretty schematic and really not the scale. It's really how the pieces are connected and in general where stuff goes. Well, that looks like a pretty real picture from open space, but uh, as the next contractor, you know, you guys are, are putting in all kinds of lineal feet of wire to get to the other side, which there may not be a need to go to the other side. Right. Right. Uh, and then another suggestion, if, if it is cast, and there's a little bit of movement, maybe we could move all the, these stations to your left. We could put them between uh, Hampshire and, and Berkshire mm -hmm. and get them out of the way of where the entrance to the garden uh, is proposed. Yeah. I, I think the key here is for Jeff to get with you, Gary, where you're, where you're anticipating your of uh, the direct screen entrance from the parking lot to your beer garden. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. really key. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's, the key, that's key for us. I feel like yeah. we're not in quicksand. We're in quicksand. Yeah. No, no, we're not. Gary, this is, this is the this, first of a meeting to try to figure yeah. out how do we tie in your vision whenever you do your project with us so we don't know so we, we truly appreciate that yeah. I, I think that you know thank you so much for involving mm -hmm. and, and all the other businesses uh, and how how it is the elements yeah i hear from you all this is to enhance everybody it doesn't matter who you are yes, we're, 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 we're only doing this because we want to make this really great uh, well, I'll look up the Jeff. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And one other element to this thing that we need to charge the contractor. We need to charge the contractor has um, a vested interest in making this work for the tenant because you don't have to sign the contract. So um, it'll get resolved and it'll get resolved to benefit everyone. Our source will probably be flexible once they understand the constraints that we're looking at. So, yeah, um, and the reason why we're having this conversation now rather than three years ago is because now it's actually possible to actually build something and probably acquire the land and, and, and so forth. Um, this structure wasn't going to work because we had no access to Elm Street uh, from the parking lot. So this will be like a, maybe you can speak about this, Jeff. It's gonna, our, our vision is that it's going to be in from North Main Street out onto Elm Street. So traffic will flow in a well-designed pattern. Once we did not get our MVP, our Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grant, uh, a few years ago, we decided that we were going to wait to, to get that access on Elm Street. So we had in off North Main and out on Elm Street. It, it made a much better parking lot. And, and that's, that's one of the reasons it's taken a couple more years because of, you know, having to be the one else walkers. It's slow. Unbelievable. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm thinking you know, you're on Goodwill Street. Could you put the other picture up there? Yeah. Sure. So I wanted to share. Yeah, I wanted to share an idea that. I wanted to share an idea that my wife Dave had, which never started, maybe 15, 20 years ago, which was only here. Well, you'll well, hear me. Over here, it's, it's for actually recorded audience. The people online can't hear you. That, that's why I can't start. Yeah. Okay. So over here, to build an arch. Mm -hmm. Okay, welcome to South Deerfield. There's some really beautiful arch. So that was her idea. But I thought over here, you know, we have the Bridge of Flowers in Shelburne, right, with the big tourist home. I thought if we could have some beautiful flowers here, mm -hmm. a community garden, but something really beautiful. So when you're coming into town, you're yeah. like, wow, you really take it. So maybe it can be done with the public school or with the whatever, but a garden. Great idea. Thank you, Jack. 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 Thank you, Jack.
There were some people online with their hands. So. Oh, great. I know we can. So can we go back online just to see uh, sure. hands up? Because I can't, we can't see that. Um, okay, uh, Emma, and then Emily, and then William. Hi there. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you were uh, aware of the demand charges um, that were coming from the original uh, EV chargers. I, I, I'm M.A. Sweetland. I'm from the Deerfield Energy Committee. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but the but the demand charges from because Eversource neglected to tell us that the uh, that we were going to have to have a demand charge since those that one EV charger we already have is the only thing on that meter. The demand charges can run up to two hundred dollars, um, mm -hmm. and I as I hope that you're aware of that and that you are, um, and that these new chargers uh, are somehow there's some other way of managing that because the town is getting is really getting skunked. If anyone charges beyond a, a, a pretty small, limited amount of charging, and so um, I, I'm sure I know Casey and and Chris are are aware of this, but I don't know if there has been a solution for the with the new EV chargers. This is a demand charge, please. Well, a, demand, a demand charge when you put something on an EV. When you, when you hook up an EV charger, if it's the only thing on the line, it's kind of like a, um, it, you have, it's like a minimum charge, right? And so if that's the only thing on there, you're paying a huge amount. If you're hooking it into a line with multiple different things pulling on it, then you don't have like this minimum charge. It's kind of like a distribution charge. So if it's the only thing on that one pole drawing, then you're you're paying a ton for that thing. But if you can dilute it, this is my understanding. I could be all wrong about this, but when I talked to the people in Greenfield who do their EV charge, they warned of this. And uh, they, they said if you can put it on a, a trunk that's already pushing a lot of electricity, multiple things, it dilutes it out. So you're not spending all that money on just the charger. So right now it's costing a thousand hundred dollars a month. <laughs> so do we want to put all the rest of them on there so that that's, what it does that's right? probably what's gonna happen, I would imagine. Yeah. And I'm right now. <clears throat> yes, Annalie Wolf Cool for Mountain Road, um, tied into EV charging also. I don't know how this ties into what MA and the demand charges. But I hope we could consider the stage three EV charging. That's the fastest. I know from my own family and friends who have um, electric vehicles, they will often Google to see where's the fastest chargers, and that becomes their destination. So just something to consider. Thank you. No, no. So, Chris, why don't you explain the, the distribution of the one, two, and three level chargers that we're looking at. Sure. So level one charger is something that you would see at a private residence. For example, if you have an electric vehicle at your home, you probably have a level one charger. Um, they're the slowest. They often get charged overnight, from my understanding. Um, a level two charger is what most chargers that you'll find in commercial um, or municipal parking lots, for example, might be. Um, they're Kind of average in terms of the length of time it takes. Um, I think they do vary greatly still in how long it takes to charge a vehicle. Um, the fast chargers, however, are they're the newest kind. They're the fastest ones. A lot of them can charge a car fully in as little as thirty minutes. Um, and there's a lot of demand for them right now from the increased number of people that are using electric vehicles. Um, and they're also thought to be a fantastic driver of economic development because. During the half hour, for example, that somebody might be using a charger, they're likely going to patronize local shops and restaurants. So um, that's a lot of the logic behind why we put so much effort into applying to this level three uh, charging grant and why we are very hopeful that it ends up working out. And if we did get the grant, how many level three chargers 
be helping to install in this area. We're going to be helping to install two in this area. Um, so alongside the two level two chargers that I've already gone through the state program, uh, that will be a total of four chargers and eight points, uh, half of which will be level two and half of which will be level three. So three, uh, four, four cars can use level four charging at the same time. So that's quite a bit for uh, downtown. Now, I have an EV, so I, I'm relatively familiar with these speeds. So, so that's a good level two, four level twos and four level threes is, is a pretty good source. So just for my understanding, we have one charger that has two fours. So you can, I got you. Oh, okay, so it's not just one for Great. And the current one that is standing at the entrance to the Liberty Lot right now is a level two. Okay. Um, William. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Welcome. Great. Uh, well, we're calling right from across the street uh, on 9 Conway Street, a uh, butters to the project. Um, but we have our two kids in the living room here, so we're at home tonight. Uh, but that's kind of, um, I, I want to start by saying we, we support the project as a butters. We think that it's good for Deerfield. We think it's good for our, our immediate community. Um, one of the, I've got a kind of a list of things and I'll just run, run through them. As, um, as a family with young kids in the area, and uh, also uh, we're, we're very, and we walk the community a lot. We are concerned, are continually concerned about the, the flow of traffic along North Main, the speed of traffic, the neglect of, of signage. I mean, we saw most recently with an accident uh, in the middle of the night. Uh, so I've got some concerns um, that relate to how traffic will flow into the parking lot. I think signage is, is a significant uh, part of that. I think enforcing of the speed limits is very important as well. Um, I also know that, that that where that location intersects with Park Street, that that really bizarre area, when cars are trying to cross from across by the dentist on Park Street to there, I often see clusters that could result in an accident. So I think that the the entry over there and and the tr the flow of traffic is very important, especially for the safety of pedestrians i think that's one concern so um that's that's one there um i do like the idea of making it a community space where there's gardens where there's uh, i i never thought of an arch i thought that was creative but um something that really helps define it as deerfield we have such great character as a town uh, that's why we love living here if we can use a project like this to help solidify our identity in some way i think that's a very important um, part of the project as well um, I had a side note about water runoff. I don't know what the impact will, will be there. Um, just finally, from a homeowner perspective, um, I, I think about lighting and safety, um, policing. I know that oftentimes later in the evening, there are, there are crowds that congregate in the, what is now a dirt patch. Um, I, I don't think that um, you know anyone who owns a home along this this space deserves to have their property um you know in the middle of the night crowded by some of the the late night um pedestrian traffic so um privacy in terms of planting some shrubberies or greeneries would would be of value to uh, to myself and perhaps the other homeowners so that's those are my thoughts and, and thank you for your work Thank you, William. Those are great, great time. Thank you. Thank you, William. Uh, certainly, lighting would be um, sensitive to uh, others, um, okay. especially private, privately owned homes. Um, the whole idea is to bring traffic off the street in the neighborhood and um, make it more attractive. And certainly, plantings, I can guarantee you, we'd be looking for good plantings um, along homes uh, because it is to make it more neighborhood feel for sure. Uh, that's been my priority. And one, and again, like I said, one of the reasons we did not pursue this a few years ago, um, because we really did want the flow of traffic to go out on Main Street, so it was a one way. And um, and I understand there is some concern about the park, having park spaces that might have congregation, but it is downtown. Our police are always really good about patrolling, and I, I, I really feel that it will be more positive than negative. And, well. and but to, to, well, is there are there plans to add lighting? Yes, there will be attractive lighting, however, and it will be 
So, you know, they have the ability now to direct it away from um, like your backyard kind of thing. You can push it down and um, direct it so it, it's more attractive and it would have a feel. That's one of the reasons that um, the senior housing committee that really chairs and I'm on as well, we have virtual design as well. We, we want to have a flow um, from Leary Lot to our campus projects. And you know, senior uh -huh. housing, you know, try to get a common, try to have a real feel of connectedness. And I mean, all you have to do is look at different communities. And I, I look at um, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, as one of the communities that I um, have visited over the years for meetings. And the transformation of that community with um, landscaping and park and and how they dealt with stormwater because one of the issues was high stormwater. And um, the violation um, of the stormwater um, kind of emptying into the ocean. So, how they dealt with it, they took empty lots and just everything is so attractive. Anybody can Google it. And that's sort of where this is coming from um, initially. And of course, Trevor and uh, has been around looking at different communities, taking pictures for years. And, and Tim is 100% on board with this as well. So, the five year, we have the money, we've determined to set it aside for this project to get started. And this hopefully will be the start of a long term renovation here in the village. So, um, Casey, you have your hand up. And... Sure. William, my name is Katie Warren. Um, I'm the town administrator. And to your point about traffic, um, the town's pursuing grants for crosswalks to slow some of the traffic on North Main Street. While we don't have a complete street plan, those elements should help some of that speed issue. And certainly we can talk to the chief about it. I know that I know the chief puts out cruisers every once in a while, but I think crosswalks can help that uh, to your point. And both Tim and Trevor have a thing, but I just will also want to say that we still are pursuing the, the common has been slow because we don't own the property associated with the common. You know, once it's you know it's state highway, so we don't normally we can't apply for grant complete street grants yet, and we're trying to work it out. So I'll have Tim and Trevor both talk about it. We have been in the board very aggressively, and with support of our legislative delegation, both Joe Comerford and Nana Blake have been wonderful about pressuring DOT, but again, another slow boat process. So just a couple of thoughts, William, um, and for everyone, um, as as we said, we don't really have a final, what we think is a final initial design to bring to the planning board, and that's what Jeff's going to help us develop. So there will be a secondary phase where we have another chance to talk about specific issues like lighting, drainage, uh, and that will be when it goes to the planning board. So sometime in July, I think you're suspecting you might be able to do that. So. This, this will have several opportunities for people to engage. Uh, another thing that will be uh, beneficial, I think, is once you have the parking infrastructure created, it's easier for the police to patrol the area. And obviously, there'll, there'll be use limitations for anything other than parking. From, I don't know what those will be. The police will you know, discuss public safety with us about you know, when, when should the park close, when should the parks close down and coordinate with the businesses in town. So there'll be many opportunities for getting further input from business owners too as, as to what we'd like to see happen. And the other thing we've been working on for um, the speed up North Main Street is in our discussions with the town common committees, that once we can get access to those roads or if we can't you know, take over the roads from the state, um, work with DOT and they've been very anxious to work with us on this. But is, uh, you know, one thought was to close Park Street, right? So that would slow down. You wouldn't have the traffic zipping through. But short of that um, would be to have Park Street come to a stop. So you stop kind of across from Cheswick's and you took a right, or you would go across into the parking lot, but you wouldn't just zip, I mean, people just zip through Park Street and right on up the, the landing zone there. I mean, it's such a wide open um, North Main Street, the cars just fly right through Park and right up through. So the thought was to, to calm that traffic, to stop it at Park Street and then turn right 
left or across into the parking. But that it, it's taking longer because we don't own it. So we're you know hope Jeff Jeff's working with us a bit on how that all kind of plays out with the comments. So we definitely hear the concern trying to figure out ways to make that work for the town. So what I'd like to do is go back to some of uh, Jeff's initial questions where, you know, is 60 car or 80 car, I mean, do, do people have any preference to see what numbers we have versus green space? Um, go ahead, Nikki, and then Do you know how many cars can park in those spaces now? In just that section, I don't. I don't think we do. I know that the. I think that sixty number came from that initial plan that um, two years ago. I am on time. So that would be a little further past where where it is now. Like yeah, yeah. And then on that plan that Ty and Bond did, the parking spaces look like you have to turn and go in, right. whereas it would be more beneficial to have them at angle if you're going to have driving in from right. that end. So one way, exactly. Right. right. And then are you going to have handicapped spark parking on both ends? I believe you have to. Right. Well, uh, just to make it a like yesterday, somebody played about the parking lot behind our building. Yeah. Which had a handicapped spot, but it was put in by subway and it's really not like beneficial. It's, really tight. it's not even like and when they read the parking lot they turn the angles on it and so it's not really handicap park right so right. like i tell people all the time i'm like i want to go to the bathroom yes yes you know as it is we have an issue with the sidewalk in front of us where there's no curb path for right. like, handicap people yeah and they have to go all the way around and that was part of when they said they were going to change the park the common yep. that they wanted to move the, the sidewalk down further, but I said, but you have all this water that comes off the building and right. down the driveway. Yep. And that's right where the the, the sidewalk was go. Which would be ice. So uh, I just want people to know that you know, you. somebody's out there looking for them, you know, looking yep. out there for handicapped parking. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Thank you. Actually, about a couple of things. I we had a great talking on River Road. Um, I think that the more green space we have, the better, especially when we consider what's happening with our water table. I know there's not weed there already, and not weed goes where the water is. So clearly something's going on. Um, I was wondering, have we considered so the, the thought of adding more black trunk to downtown? Um, is kind of horrifying, especially as I tried to breathe over the last few days with the fires. Um, have we considered solar canopies for the parking lot like they have at River Valley Market? If you've seen it, they offer shade as well as they generate power and we can start charging Eversource. Although they do not have a charging need, I generate for them. But anyway, so I, I would love to see us consider a solar canopy. Also, um, Adding the concept of bicycle movement in there. Like, I love with the garden, like maybe you have a bike slash pedestrian path that is shielded, but is protected from the cars by that along the way that then could come up through to what's your brood. <laughs> okay. and, 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 and then maybe someday go up through to the campus as an ongoing, because um, we are talking about it on campus. Making sure we have walk, a walking path yeah. for people in the community and then that opens up to elementary school, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think the more green space, the better. I'd love to see solar canopies um, and um, consider please bike path slash pedestrian access prevented by green. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bob. Well, Bob's coming up to say that. The, the energy committee is going to look into wherever we can put solar solar infrastructure. So I do know that those panels are quite expensive. So that's one of the obstacles that Peterfield faces. Um, however, putting solar panels on some of the houses, the buildings in town, 
and leading that to the infrastructure that there could be something that we could work with the building owners on. But protected parking oh, yeah, is a benefit yeah. to all of us of a certain hair color. Oh, absolutely. It's absolutely. No, it's, it's, you know, if, if you can put the parking for 500000 and the solar array, uh, the, the solar canopy is a million dollars, then you cannot build the parking because you want to have the solar. You know, so it's a, it's a trade off. Bob Decker, what's up here? Question I have is Are you going to put a sidewalk around the whole perimeter of the, of the parking lot so the people that don't fall and trip over dirt and gravel and everything else? The other thing is, uh, there should be no online parking. Thank you. And uh, because I don't think that's what you want to have is people parking a camper there for the weekend. And, right. Or what have you. Uh, and the places that we talked about, the restaurant that uh, Trevor mentioned earlier, uh, are they going to give the town an easement so anybody can walk through there? I think or, or is it or is it just going to be restricted to a customer going to their no. location? No, I, th I think, uh, Bob, when I uh, talked to him tonight, you know, I said, oh, we were thinking of different ways that we could get pedestrian traffic out onto Elm. And he said, oh, you know, usually my trailer's not here. You know, people usually walk through here. But so I think he would be open to we ask for easement and try to create a safe. That's my point. Yeah. Is we need to get an email. Of course. Yeah. Uh, many, many years ago, decades ago, when kids went to school here, right, they would go across the street between the two houses and head over to Chicks, which is where that building is. Yeah. And and the kids would go for an ice cream corn or whatever. Yeah. But you can't go through people's private yards now. But right. that happened years ago. But the thing is, you want to make sure that nobody's in there all night. Right. And, and you probably need a speed bump, maybe more than one. But you shouldn't make it too hard so you can't plow it. Right. But, yeah. the, but you should put a sidewalk around the, the perimeter. So that people can actually walk without falling and getting hurt. Yep, that's all. Great thoughts. Sounds, sounds good. Great thoughts. Thank you, Bob. Yes, I, I think our intentions are good. Cool. Yeah, welcome. Rick Allen, Six Elm Street, on the G9 Pigs. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, couple of things. Twenty-five years ago, the discussion was to come through there with a walkway. Um, but since 1979, parking has been an issue all and every year, yeah. especially in the winter. And I just think that going forward should be looking forward and getting as many spaces in as you can right now, because if you added another restaurant or two, on a Friday and Saturday night, there still would be no parking. Okay. Okay. Which is a great thing. It is. But I just think that, you know, once that parking lot goes in, you're not going to go back and say, what do we do next? Right. And if you go to all the cities and everywhere else, you know, Northampton, they all build up. I mean, they've got three and four story right. projects yeah. and a lot more restaurants. Yeah. So that's just my problem. Problem. Yeah. yeah, open to what I can't yeah. lose my parking. Of course, you know, yeah, yeah, that's the idea to kind of add that, add that parking there for, for those businesses. One other thought I had was I didn't know if anybody, you know, own, owning those buildings now, if they have tenants there, do they have enough parking right now? Or is there, what are the thoughts about that? And, and it, you know, when we say all, no overnight parking, it, are there, should we make some space for a couple of those units if we're asking for an easement proof or pedestrian, that kind of thing? I don't know. It, well, it would be a I, I would need some if we lost space. Right. Okay. Um, secondly, the tenants are fine, but, you know, I can't provide all the help of Johnny Pigs with parking. So right. they're on the street or they're in your parking lot. Yes. Okay. But they're temporary. They're right. there for three or four hours and they're gone. Yep. But, you know, that it's it's always been tight, always will be. We've got dumpsters to deal with. I agree. Um, 
I wish you was a better way to deal with those. Yeah, yeah. I noticed those there. Yeah, we have to find a space for those as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jeff, do you think it would be possible to give us when you are sitting down and doing the design, uh, like a 50 plus kind of design and then maybe an 80 design so that we can see the trade offs? Yeah, we could we could discuss that because I I think visually it would be good for us to understand what we're. I mean, I certainly understand it makes sense to have more parking lot, but if you have more parking, you don't want to give up the green. So let's have a discussion of what that looks like, and maybe we can kind of have a compromise and maybe seven. Who knows? Um, I was going to say, I, was going to say uh, I, I'm assuming that as part of the process of design, you're going to be obviously having to interact with the properties that are bought. And if they have parking, if they have tenants in the upstairs of their buildings, those questions are going to be considered in your design process, I would assume. They are. And I think, you know, I think based on what I'm hearing and what I understand, you know, I think our, our scope right now was, was fairly limited, but yeah. it certainly, you know, is apparent to me that, you know, all of this is integral to, to the design. Yeah. And so if it means, you know, we need to add a month on the schedule, but I think, I, I think this is certainly part of the process. I would envision, you know, to me, it would make sense to come back to you all with a couple of different concepts that look at, you know, you know, more parking than not, but what it means with stormwater and connections so that everybody is, to your point, can see the ramifications of one versus the other and, and the trade-offs. Yeah, right. And paraphrase, no parking lot is an island. It's got to integrate with the right. around it and the buildings around it. So absolutely uh, you can't design a parking lot without thinking about those. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I agree. You need more to that. So I'm, I'm wondering if we can set up a meeting like a date right now. Sure. Um, looking at so that everyone would be able to come um, and participate with some concepts, drawings, because I, I think that's going to be the most productive. We could sit here all night and talk about stuff, but I think if we have some pictures and drawings to react to, um, that's going to be very helpful. Um, so looking at our schedule um, in July, uh, Jeff, do you have some, you said mid-July, so that's like the week of the 10th. Mm -hmm. Longer, please. Well, I think, I think for initial, yeah, I mean, if we're talking about coming to you out some context and having some time to get together with the buyer, and, and um, that that is doable. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, what day would work for you? We have a select board meeting already scheduled on the 12th, but okay. so we could do um, the planning board is Monday on the first Monday, though. So, we could do Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday. Uh, at this point, I don't think I have any other commitments that I'm aware of. So, any of those should work. Um, does, does anybody have a preference for the evening, Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday? It's not Thursday at the same time. Oh, yeah, I know we wait and then we'll do that. Would, would Tuesday, July 11th, work with, for everybody? Oh, okay. yes. I'm just, just you know, well, well, we have key thing that we need really at the end of this. We're right here on the end of the month. Probably. What is the folks in attendance? Is Monday okay? Is Monday the 10th? And, and do, have we heard from them? Anybody else want to have? I mean, we really tonight would love to hear from you if anyone has any other comments that went the way in on anything. One more thing. Sure. Nikki, Nikki that's fine. <laughs> Stand right yeah. up. Can you just make sure that you tell people they can't park there in the winter time so they don't move when the plow trucks come through? Yeah. That's, that's the big issue right now. <laughs> Is it? People do not move. Tenants right. do not move. Okay. okay. So well, parking right. lot is part cloud, and then wherever they park, it's these big walks. And yeah. So nobody comes back. All right. All right. Anyone in, in the attendance of your online or in, in person who is a tenant who parks in that, that area or an owner of properties that has that issue? I think it's the people that live up above our building. Oh. They're the ones that are parking. Yeah. yeah. But some have two vehicles. Right. And, and does does the building owner JTK own any space where these parking lots yeah. exist? Right. Behind, behind the yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. But then you also have Chevlix, you have the insurance company, you have uh, well, so the EMC, yeah. you have the White House. Yeah. yeah, that's why I asked Jeff to you know, we definitely need to integrate the existing what people think of as parking and their property with this parking lot because you know we're not going to land block these folks. Uh, right. So, and a lot more of those people upstairs have two vehicles, right. not just one anymore, or not at all like they used to be in the old days. Yeah, right. yeah. So those things have those things have to be addressed with those yeah. property owners. Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'd love to hear from you. Hello. Hi there. Ben Nikosensky, 10 and 12 Elm Street. Great. And my building is primarily, I have two commercial spots in front, but the rest are um, residents. Okay. And many of my residents are now quite fearful of this whole project because right now there's a beautiful field back there. Yes. Uh, one of the tenants has made it their permanent home of staying. Uh, which makes me feel good, good, and they love the town, and they have mowed in back and put up a little tent. I saw that today. Yes, I did. And that, that's, and I, I said they were making that. it their home yes. instead of having transient people in and out. Exactly. And as a landlord, Rick knows you want to attract good people yes. into the community. Yeah. So I really worry for my tenants. Yeah. And it's so private back there yeah. that how are we going to protect them? I agree. Because I do want them to make it their home. Yeah. And how I sell the property is that it's a quite little town that is <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> and that's how we're trying to get them down here. Right. So um, yeah, there has to be a bumper or something. Yeah, that's and I really like your idea of that L part next to Hanshaw being parking. Yeah. Now I did talk with Hanshaw and they did take down those trees for me that were hindering uh parking for my tenants. Yeah. And I called them and thanked them very much right. for that. But what I would need is another buffer. Yeah. And I love the arborvitae sure. arbor vitae set grow because it is a nice spot right in a yeah. really green space and though i like the gentleman with the flowers and everything i think it i'd like it in the back of my building yeah. more than a big black parking lot right. back there and also a tenant suggested to me also how about a um, community garden yeah uh and that would be a nice space so again um Rick's looking out for Gianni. Yeah. And I'm looking out tenants. for my tenants to we make sure they're comfortable and and uh, and I like the greenery. You know, when you when we have this picture of the trees and the water, yeah. it just welcomes you. And, and I think that's the most important part is yes. being welcomed and right. not just spaces. Right. So that's one of the reasons we are have been so sincere about having the green. Oh, um, space. space. Absolutely. We, we did try to do it through the MBT program um, because it is quite expensive. So, but we didn't, they, they don't do parking lots. But so, no. when I stopped there tonight, just that, I, that was the first thing I saw that these people live here. This is their backyard, Absolutely. right? So, and I'm wondering, you know, once we look at it, have it surveyed out, okay, so where? Where do we create that divide, or where do we put the other bodies up so that they have a private space there? And then how do we make the, the road, you know, not just a square parking lot, but more of a gentle curve around there that we open up to Gary's spot so it's a nice walking area and a green space on the corner, and then we have some other parking and some some dividers. You know, I love um, the, the garden that he's got there. And I thought, well, maybe other people would have gardens. So there, and there is some elevation. So there is some work to do the design about, you know, making sure that, that the residences um, and tenants have, have their own space. And then this is a parking space and mm -hmm. clearly defined, but open, manicured well for, for pedestrians. Right. And, and sustainable. And I, I really, my senior hand in just one second. I, one of the problems with, you know, I'm on the conservation district, children conservation district, and you know, community gardens is a big, big thing. But you know, sustainability you have to have the people to participate and be willing to 
maintain that kind of stuff. So it's not to say that we're not going to consider it, but we do have to have sustainability in it. I'm, I love flowers. Absolutely, we're trying to plant as many as we can downtown to absorb, uh, you know, have more native pollinator kind of gardens and absorb water and stuff like that. But again, you have to make understand that you're weighing against the sustainability and how do you set it up. So I think the idea is to inject all this input and, and uh, hopefully you will talk to him some more so that he can incorporate some of your concerns mm -hmm. and yeah. both of you um, as, you know, right. it would be, oops, 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 oops. It'd be wonderful yeah. to see the outdoor um, seating on yes. the restaurant that it's becoming more and more where it was a very European thing. Yeah. Now since COVID it's becoming an American thing too, which yeah. I think is, is healthy it is and, and makes people happier. Absolutely. And, and, and it's and more inviting. It's right. more exactly. And that's what I want for the back too, more yeah. inviting, you know, peaceful, all of that. The one issue, uh, the one thing though, I do want to comment, and, and that's about the uh, trees that were planted on Elm Street there. I know I talked with Kevin mm -hmm. um, at the DPW, and um, we were talking about that because people were complaining about the sidewalks not being yep. done well, you know, they all done. whatever, and lighting. Yeah, there is no lighting. We talked about the old lamps. We talked about yeah. the trees. We talked about, and I said something before you even think about putting the uh, sidewalks in. I mean, the one thing you should be considering. Is the electricity going yeah. to these lights, yeah. and then these beautiful garden airs filled with flowers, yeah. and and it has to go with the whole keeping of the town. And yeah. I was just surprised to see the trees, yeah. because it, it, it to me it was like that should be a final thought, I agree. as opposed to putting them in and taking parking away from it too. And I don't know what you you know they could have widened it a little bit or. Like when you're in New York City or whatever, they have the grates with the trees right on the sidewalk. And mm -hmm. so I, I was just shocked to, to see that. And, and the, the street does need more trees. I mean, these two little yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. sticks on, on either end. We know it's but I wish they had done, you know, more. Yeah, it's it's a learning experience. Yeah. It's a learning experience. Because I talked to Kevin and he said, you know, before you do anything, you know, there's certain uh, basics that need to be addressed first yeah. to build on a nice idea and a welcoming town. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what you're planning to do with the old um, station companies, yeah. but I hope it's not a parking lot. No, we've got, uh, so we did a letter of interest for uh, some people who are looking to buy it and put in, I think it, well, James, an idea, James, but, James and Jason Power are making an offer on that to hopefully put in uh, a restaurant. Something like oh, that would be great. And a small park, of, park, of park that would yeah. face our common, mm -hmm. which would be lovely. Your, yeah. your points are, are well taken. You know, some of the tree stuff is like, you know, you only get so much money to do little things. And we would love to do it all. I think our plan is, you know, Leary Lot, the common. We're focusing next on Elm. I mean, that's my, I would wish that we would, because that's the answer. How to do the sidewalk to work with you, easements? How do you know? How do you do your sidewalk where ours ends? You know, mm -hmm. to redo that whole area, lighting, you know, better planting uh, trees and sidewalks. So that it's it's coming. It takes a long time. We don't have any money, but that's all the. Yeah. That is the plan for sure to move towards one of the most more important part of the town a problem to develop is the split level. So the sidewalks in front of Mickey's uh, store are three or four feet higher than the rest of the mm -hmm. common area. So it makes it extremely challenging and very expensive. And I'm a first year select board member, so I'm learning all this. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, one of the things that I committed to do in my Grant for office was to try and bring in more state and federal money. And we're starting to see some of that happening. We just got a half a million dollars for more for the library, for instance. So we're going to work like heck to mm -hmm. get more money for these things, but it's 
I went to Gianni's the other night and we're just walking on the asphalt slash cement slash <laughs> railway <laughs> track block. It's a, it's a disgrace, really, but uh, you know, it's finding the money and uh, you know, and and having a plan because yeah. you know, the last thing you want to do is spend a lot of money putting sidewalks in and have to rip them all up because Mascot tells you, no, you can't do that. Or, you know, and so we want to be very thoughtful about the center of town and we're going to be doing some North Main Street sidewalks, um, but we're going to start at the far, it sounds like a crazy idea, but start at the far end and then plan for the center because all of the, all of the center of town needs to be beautified. And part of that is just getting walkable sidewalks that- Yeah, I mean, from last year, yeah. I mean, we don't have any control over that. That's what is so frustrating. That's, that's true. And uh, the side of the road, I read about it, so it's uh, when you go to North Hampton now, uh, there's a lot of storefronts that are closed. And yeah. I think that this, the one thing that still keeps people going to North Hampton Restaurant. is food. Yeah. It's the next spot. So it's good to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, very much. Well, thank thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Basically, I just wanted to mention is just make sure we have your, you signed in, we have your number, we can contact you, yeah. kind of do all these okay. things. Good job. Yeah. Great. William, go ahead. Uh, uh, for, for the folks on the the Zoom, how can we get access to the survey? Uh, that's the one of my one of my first questions. And then a secondary thought, as I hear other ideas, uh, and I think to these types of layouts in other towns, it seems like perhaps during the rendering phase, it might be worthwhile putting a municipal grade uh, chain link fence, so even if there's arborvitaes. A chain link fence is a clear delineation that this this is a public space versus a private space. And so that might want to be included in there. And, and, I, and I think back to some of the larger municipalities, that delineation is a very important um, characteristic of, of a project and a safety feature and, and, a, and a privacy feature as well. So um, the Zoom and then that, but thank you. Sure, so come in is answer the question about the survey. So I'll make sure that that gets uploaded to the town website tomorrow. Um, so if you check DeerfieldMA.us, um, it'll be under the news section, which is on the front page. Uh, I'll make sure that it has a prime spot on there so that anybody who wants to get the survey that wasn't able to put their name on the sign in sheet here. So if they were attending remotely or if they weren't able to make it tonight and still want to have their comments heard, um, feel free to use that, which will be on the town website. And we're, uh, Chris Larry always writes really accurate, good articles for us. Yeah. So I'm trying to put that in his article for um, on and covering this. So Chris, make sure that. Chris has the information. Okay. Um, if there's no more comment, then we'll wrap up. Take time to look at these amazing photos back here in history at Deerfield. And please come and celebrate next weekend with us. Yes. The latest fireworks. No, no, not, not this. Well, not this, but yeah. the weekend of yeah. the 17th. Yeah. The time. <laughs> 17th. <laughs> I want to just make a, a general comment. Sure. Um, there was one year uh, you had a couple of deer back in Deerfield, mm -hmm. and I took my sister and she said, I heard this, so let's go to South Deerfield. And we went, and we saw a little this and a little that. <laughs> and I said, I bet it's in old Deerfield. So we went to old Deerfield. There were no deer. <laughs> and then I came back and I said, I guess this must be it, but it's not it. And then on 116, the, that company over there had a lot of deer in the woods and everything. And I said, that was wonderful. And I was wondering, you know, to propel this, if somehow um, you can work with um, Yankee Candle, it's been changed a lot of times, yeah. but I do have a federal ID that I probably could get deer wholesale okay. and get get the residents to put deer yeah. under their yeah. arms yeah. and drop them in and then you know to like what Amherst does uh, with the the Mary Maple they have the band from Amherst there they have the choir oh. we have a store right down here yeah. uh, selling hot chocolate um some of the better you know the people with the businesses can do a little something to promote, and I'm sure Yankee Candle would be glad to help with some of that. 
uh, because it promotes them too. You know, gee, it's the day off, and you know, Yankee Candle's open, and, and they're doing something special for that event also. Hatfield has their little luminaries. Yeah, I love your luminaries. Yeah, luminaries. And I'm saying, you know, I, I could try to help with this love it. of having a federal ID that I can find these deer. Yeah. And the people can buy them wholesale. Great. Well, there are more deer. Yeah. 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 And I learned from the Great. We do need more. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. It's just appreciate it. Yeah. Yes, we need that. It's, it's yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. no. Is, is there anybody else that wants to make that? Oh, Denise, Denise. I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand. We've got between the light and the angle. I don't think we took the cursor. Yeah, that's the other one. Okay. Well, Hello. Have I'm sorry. Hello. How did you like to say something? Sure. Wanted to um, add my voice to the calls um, with regards to considering the possibility of um, working out some kind of an arrangement with the owner of the building that um, Nick, um, the Cheslick's Market is in, um, trading off some of the space so that the possibility would exist for those businesses to expand into the back and have. Um, have seating outdoors, but I can't see how that would happen unless the parking, some parking was given to them in the further away from the buildings to compensate for um, the expansion of um, some of the businesses into the parking area. Good thought, Thank Thanks, you. Greg. I know you want to work hard on that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I think, I think uh, Jeff is going to be able to be. Come up with some comments. Right. Yeah, for sure. And, and so see what people want more. And mm -hmm. I, I, I think we'll all be interested. So, again, please um, make sure mark on your calendar 6 p.m. on July 10th. Come back and look at some concepts now that we have had some initial um, information from everybody. And this is very exciting. And I feel like we're making some progress. Yeah. No, I mean, it's so much ideas. Really, that means things might. Yeah, thanks, Ellie. Stay engaged. Stay engaged. Yes, please stay engaged. Stay engaged. Thank you, everybody. Um, we're going to work. Okay. So, there are a couple of things that you need to be reasonable. And, yeah. Thank you also for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if we are really able to, we are going to be on the side. This is not the way I do what I do. Oh, yeah. Good, good. I'm going to give that one. 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 Thank 
Tom Sullivan came to my house the other night from the conservation. That whole thing he did here was all about what I've been doing. And that's really it's a big guy. Yeah. You know, um, it was uh, Owen once. Oh, yeah. Tom oh, Sullivan. Oh. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 The whole thing is well, yeah, but that's okay because that's what I need to tell her. Um, because yeah, I have probably a children, yeah, because I have we we have the grant money for the conservation district to hire Owen to be our consultant to, to rip stuff up and to replant it. And, and pay for re for the plants. No, you have to do it. You pull out like you pull out poison bittersweet and not be that kind of stuff. But um, what we want to do is cut um, sumac, even though that's native. The problem is it's still predominant, it's still invasive. It doesn't allow your pollinator. It's a monoculture kind of thing. Let's assume that they're going to identify what they However, you can't do multiple are just two minutes. I'll need I just need to say this is good. Yeah, what's there? Just shoot yeah, up everything. Not every one, but just right. that too. No, we might apply this pretty soon. No, no, no. Just this is what so, so, this is what the, the, this yeah. is what the buffer is. It it it's it's a sign of yeah. all this yeah. junk. It's, it's, yeah. And then, yeah, it's basically yeah. junk. It's yeah. basically yeah. junk. And yeah. uh, and that's what we take. Yes, that's what yeah. 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 But I just need. Something to go to the con 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 notes. You got and you got and we're going to work with you and so on. Sure. Anything else about the test field? Great job, but it's surprising. You did a very, very good job. It was awesome. Well, yeah, but that actually really it was months before we got an appraisal for the leaf. I know. I mean, we were at that's how we were doing. I don't know the concept, so I was glad we reached out to them. Yeah, they're an easy one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I called them originally. Um, 
to try and get it to four times a week, so I really wanted to have that as part of the number of four times a day. Literally last day. I mean, like, can you pack it if we survive the town and we talk to them? And says, yes. <laughs> Yeah, so you have no idea how bad it is. Well, the things no. to do. All right. Um, so this is uh, we need to resign to, um, for Mass uh, DOT. This is the North Street Bridge. Okay. So we've already voted this. Yep. Yeah. So we have one sentence. And then that it doesn't okay. substantially change the incentive the letter. And then I can make a motion to appoint David Zamoyski, South County. Emergency Medical Service Advanced EMT for the term beginning July 1st, 2023 and ending July 5th, 2023. Well, no, right? no, five days. Five days. It's five days. And that's his, yeah, but you know what? The time. email, yeah. can I just ask the email here says to, he's, he's settled on July 7th. Shouldn't we? we well, you know what? Let's get to July 7th and that way we're talking. Okay, I'll yeah. so make a motion to appoint. David we just need to make sure Zimoyski, South County Emergency Medical Service, uh, Advanced EMT, beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending July 7th, 2023. Or okay. before. I, I will second that. Is there any more discussion? Mm -hmm. uh, if not, all those in favor? It's in that GI. Governor Daniel, aye. Carolyn, yes, aye. Okay. Um, so, Casey, um, I don't think there's a rush in signing this. But we should have the corrected date. Um, oh, so maybe I can. All right. I was trying to we could, we could just. Do you want me to go do that now? Um, because I could do it before you guys finish signing. Yeah. Well, yeah. because I think it's. I can't. The email know. was said July seventh, and right, this said fine. July fifth. So that's okay. That's we fine. can. The issue we can redo that that appointment document and say July seventh. Okay. Okay. Um, we can use your stamp. Yeah. Next okay. motion. Uh, the Valley Health. Um, okay, another motion. Yeah, the, the Valley Health thing needs to be signed. Um, you just you just need the chair here. No. No. I oh, it all. needs all. We voted this already. Yes. Yeah. Voted okay. This. So I make a motion to um, accept the resignation of EMS Chief uh, South County. EMS chief, uh, effective July 30th, uh, Zoe D. Smith said it's been an honor to serve his community and our community and our EMS providers for more than 20 years. Um, do we have a second? Second. Um, and I would like to just say thank you very much. Uh, Zoe was instrumental in making sure the EMS service was set up and um, having been involved in this for almost 20 years, it was amazing that it came together. Three towns have been operating together and a lot of it had to do with um, efforts of uh, Zoe. And I want, I want like to say a few words too. I think um, when I first became selectman um, is when, when I was, uh, we, we all joined the South County um, Board of Oversight for the for the EMS and um, so we just had taught me a lot about uh, how to really run a, run a good meeting. Um, he was always trying hard to um, very accurate in his information and um, always upbeat and supporting his team. She uh, she was uh, supporting his team, her team, uh, and and then uh, just had taught me a lot about EMS service, why it was important why we need the machines that we needed um teaching me how, how you know what are the what are the aspects of an ambulance why it's important to fund these things um and really supported supported the team and uh it taught me a lot about um you know how how to be on it be on an oversight board and um i thought she did an amazing job for for the time that i worked with her so really appreciate that and I would just like to uh, say that in my year on the uh, South County EMS Board of Oversight, it's been a pleasure to work with Zoe, um, and I wish her well in her new uh, job with the State Office of Emergency Medical Services. I think she's going to be a great addition to their team, and I wish her all the best. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hochi, aye. Carolyn McCain, aye. Carolyn S. aye. Um, 
Can we we have voted both the IMA and the this is a liquor license that we need to resign. Do we need to re-vote this paper? I don't think so. No. I didn't have the documents before. Okay. Um that was what we were waiting for. We okay. I wanted, um, to, I wanted to hit this real quick for everybody. Uh, just the Deerfield Recreation Department's uh, summer concerts are back. So July 7th is Union Jack. July 14th is Chicken and Wire. July 21st is Cottonwood. July 28th is Rock 201. These will be 6.30 to 8 p.m. at the Memorial Field here right behind Town Hall. Um, parking's on North Main Street and in front of Town Hall. There's no parking behind Town Hall. That's where the concert will be. So um, please come and enjoy the show. It's a really great, and I'll mention these again at our next meeting. Um, this is um, so that we can purchase relevant software through the PHE grant. Um, this is for inspection only. This is not can, online permit. Can I ask why we didn't go with the plan that we were all given? That is because um, Primize is like a Cadillac version, and we couldn't afford it under the PHE grant for all eight towns. But isn't it best for Deerfield to have it all under one? We entity? still can. We still can. This is just for inspector software. This is not the yeah. online permit. So I have a question. So tell me what it is then. Can we do the online permitting through Permitize because it would create a lot of efficiencies in the office? Our if we want, if we want to spend the money for the primize system for Board of Health, then we can spend the money. It's, it has no impact on this. Well, that, I sent so, her an email and I asked her what the timeline if they were going to onboard permitting as well as inspections. And I haven't. I just sent it. Just we we it. haven't voted that as a group how we, okay. that we want to spend the money because um, uh, Montague has a different permitting prop online permitting greenfield has a different online permitting they have municipality municipality five yeah. or something yeah. like that and then um uh Sunderland has something else uh through what um their health agent uses and then um shoot Berry and lever have nothing so what we decided to do is we are hopefully hiring a shared inspector. So this is to have software consistent with shared inspection. Do those inspections. Right. And the relevant housing unit is the best um, there is. It's with the state. Paul Hoffman has done it and then the state is using it. So we all decided as a group that this was better for the inspector. So we had consistent um, inspections for like the ones we're, we're faced with right now. So we're talking about a health inspector, or what are we talking about? Just health health inspector okay. only. So, okay. and it's not even our health inspector. If our if nobody wants to use it here, whoever we hire, well, you we can use it. term it out. This is this is in the group purchase. Okay, through right. through so, the grant. Through the grant, there's yeah. no cost, no yearly fee, nothing. Okay, well, um, so what agency is this for? It's for the, is it described? It's for the Valley Health oh, Collaborative. Collaborative. Deerfield belongs to Greenfield, not in Deerfield. Okay, so this is no cost to us. No cost. It's, this is part of our $496,000 grant a year. And mm -hmm. and so, but our, but our inspector would use this to do. If they wanted to. Do. If they wanted to put for. Food inspections, inspections, all, and all health inspections. Okay, to keep track of it. But it's mostly uh, we are looking at it as an investment as a housing inspection. Mm -hmm. that, that was the selling point to all of us is that whatever housing issues we have, this one was far superior for board of health, not for not for building inspection. No, no, okay. this is just board of health. And then, this is this would be on an iPad mm -hmm. that the health inspector uses. Okay. Whether ours wants to use it or not, it doesn't matter. All it right. Be the shared. So um, I make a motion to approve uh, uh, signing the contract to use relevant systems Inc. for the Valley Health Collaborative, Deerfield's portion of the Valley Health Collaborative. 
I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Tim Hill, she aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And again, this is, we're, we're limiting it, but we need to spend the money by June 30th. That's all. Otherwise, um, we lose some of the money. Have we uh, put an ad in the paper for the replacement or? No, we're, we're, we're looking at, we want to review the job description. So I have offers that are actually, um, Val and Dick and I are going to sit down next week because we want to be able to publish office hours for availability right. and coordinate what each one is going to do. Okay. Um, so we'll solidify that and start publishing it okay. so that when Alex leaves, we're ready. Um, I believe at this point, Dick's going to be working Tuesday, Thursday, and Val will work Monday, Wednesday. We will be closed on Friday, mm -hmm. but they're also going to share. Um, the responsibilities of ins food inspections during the weekends if we have food trucks and stuff. So, so they're going to trade off. There was an email about some inspections coming up. Um, I saw an email from Alex just about he, that everyone's aware of it. I don't know. He just wanted to make sure we're aware of it. I think there's one in Deerfield. Uh, they were going to be permanently or somewhat permanently at uh, if Atlas. If he pays, if the per, if the inspection is successful, they're a year pre-inspection. And and I'm sure they're fine because you feel the right in front of the right. town hall. So um, they're going to be inspected at Deerfield Academy. Yeah. If everything is fine, then we'll look at waiving some of the semi. Okay. Wait, so it's not every right. But we every still time. need we still need to we need we Dick and based on the inspection, Dick and Bell will decide with how many times a month that right they want to randomly inspect it. Got it. And then that okay. will be the only charge. All right. Is so what'll happen is that'll all make sure it gets done. Right. Okay. It, it, the, the whole point is just to make them safe because they have some right. exposure. So right. but if the person is legitimately operating a good operation and they're there every right. four days a week. You know, are you going to charge them four days a week? No. We no, need to inspect no them four days no. a week. No. But you want the ability to randomly. Of course. And yeah. Answer. And make sure we're about. Uh, there, there's, uh, there's an entity that wants to come to town that is, uh, I think they're in front of the town hall on the common in Greenfield now, and they're going to be doing oh, yeah, the, the sort of. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. not sure if it's Mexican or yes, exactly. Yeah. The tacos and different stuff. They're going to be doing the reunion, yeah. and then they also plan on being in front of Catholics as well. Or quite a bit. So I'm not sure exactly. So we have we haven't sorted out the exact schedule. I just got a quick email on where they they want to be at Atlas. I think so. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. so there's not a need to. I mean, Do that's every exactly single right. thing. Yeah, that's exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. So they're talking about being up there too. Just, yeah. just for the reunion weekend. Yeah, just, okay. yeah, just for that reunion. Can I go there? Sure. Um, yeah, do All you right. feel do I you just feel want to make sure I want to start the email. Okay. All right. Um, Casey, so do, do you, you have a vote? Did we vote on this? Did we all say yes? Yes, we all voted um, yes. On the, uh, the uh, of course, we did. Uh, uh, we did vote, yeah. Okay. We did, yeah, we okay. did vote. No, too, right. Yes. Just, yeah. But I'm, I'm not sure. Um, Casey, can you, is this? Maybe we all should shift. Um, I think maybe we should have the, the vote to have the board of chair execute on behalf of the board of health. Isn't there well, a requirement there? I think we should have the select board for all three of us. Yeah, yeah even though there's only one signature because it yeah, works a little out here to have just to have me sign both. All right. So I think we'll all sign and that way. Um, so while you're signing, I'm just going to ask a question. I mean, does the, does the Board of Health um, staff need Board of Health permitting software with the town of Deerfield? It would be helpful. It would be helpful. It's very heavy in terms of process. Right. Um, and a lot of it's manual. Right. Manual inputs. Oh. That's the problem. Well, I, had I had asked um, Amy how that was going. I think she was working with yes, you. Yes, we requested an updated vote. She and I are going to sit down and go over it. Okay. Um, this and that this was one of the questions. That's why I asked. Right. Because we need to go through the list. I think um, it's important to be all the same. But I, however, it works out. I just think 
sooner the better for, for uh, right. yeah. and that's why we've been doing that. Yeah, so Simple. I was I was going to ask. I mean, my understanding is these are module modular and they're add-ons. Yeah, so yeah. you want add-on add series. Yep. So are you modifying the thirty-seven thousand dollar contract what to would include we... this or and that's going to hold that up or can we just buy the permanent software, let her start using it, and yeah. then buy a module? So if we're going to do it, we should do it all at once. Because? Because it's easier to train everybody, because you've got a lot of people that need to be trained. Um, but that. functionally, what we would do is stay within the 37880. Um, that's the approved amount that the board gave us. This is why she and I want to sit down, because there's certain module, modules that... Uh, we could onboard later. Um, particularly, the busiest things are inspections, Board of Health, and ConCom. Um, actually, planning and zoning aren't as busy as ConCom. ConCom's been really busy. So, we want to sit down and sort of go over that together. Um, yeah, but we would want to stay within the amount. Yeah. We don't want to go over that if we can help it. You have a timeline for when you want to complete that? We have, I, just got, I just sent the proposal to review tomorrow. Okay, she and I are so talk this conceivably we could, we've already agreed that we can spend this money for right. the software, so do we need to do this again? No, okay. no. it's no. a matter of us putting everything in place. It was yeah. just it's, the fact that we needed an updated proposal. Yeah, whatever you can do this again. Well, that's not because we have to Love sign it. a contract for that. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing you should know is I've almost nailed down the earmark issues and should be able to sign that contract. Oh, um, okay. Hopefully tomorrow. Great. The hundred thousand oh, dollars. Yeah, great, good, we yeah. had some questions that we had to take back with the state. So and we got a lot of support from Elder Affairs, great. Senator Palmer's office. Um, the both people at Elder Affairs, one's contract manager and one's yeah. the manager. Um, I've been on the phone with them for the last few days, and I think we should be able to get all of them tomorrow. That's great. Um, so I just wanted everybody to know that we're <laughs> and then uh oh Andrea wasn't until the fall, right? Like, because she was busy for the um, we've got two things in front of her in okay. this project. So what we just discussed, I've talked to Andrea about this and she's ready to, to do the procurement pieces once we have steps. So oh, really for the Leary lot. Yes. Oh, okay. I was so we have sure. the sidewalk. She and I have, we have to meet about a, a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. um, the Leary lot, I wrote myself a note to, follow, to check up with her because yeah. I had already so talked to her. And then the specs for the HVAC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I had July open. That's why yeah. I wrote July. No, it gives it gives Jeff time, oh. and it gives Chris time, and it gives a bunch of other people who are part of all of this time. So I think the next meeting went really well. Yeah, it did. I, and I'm really excited. I was very excited to hear that their input and their enthusiasm. Yeah. And I know that they're nervous, but I think just walking that property today, I, I would love to see it like staked a little bit. So we, I would love to see there's plenty of room for parking. And then there's, I think there's plenty of room for green space around the area. Place, and yeah. then you pick up, you pick up parking on the way out again too. But I like the idea. You need to be, be careful about how, what the width of that is, because mm -hmm. that was actually part of the conversation when we first started these discussions yeah. with Cam Shop. Right. And if there's a public Maybe safety on one side or something. So yeah. I'm going to encourage a couple of staff members to watch this and provide comments. Right. But we may, may need input from other public safety personnel. Sure. So that's something that Chris and I briefly talked to each other about. So he'll, he and I will follow up on it. Um, I just want to say it was really lovely. It was in the article in the paper about um, getting more money for the Tilton Library. And I just want to say, Kim, thank you. I know we asked you to write so much, and it's really lovely that it panned out to yeah. 200000 already. Because uh, we, we have some of the things in the article, I'm, I'm not going to go to that. Uh, <laughs> or a mystery to me. Um, but Overall, we had a great team. Once we got it organized, you know, we kept it moving. And I know that uh, you know there were some concerns about hurting cats, and but I'm not. it was a very organized uh, process with the other eleven libraries. Yeah, and, great job. Uh, and, That's and, you great. Know, and Joe, in particular, gave us a lot of good advice during the process. So it's a good uh, team. Yeah, he really well. He, he can't sneeze about half a million dollars. No. I just wanted to say something as a follow up to that. I was on the call with Jared from Senator Comerford's office today, discussing something, the other, the Comerford earmark. And Jared made a point 
to uh, to really tell tell me that that community collaboration was really important. But I also want to let people know that Joe really fought hard for this oh, yeah. on our behalf. She's amazing. And, well, hold the team together and her. You yes. Know, I, I her just want to say that hopefully this is not the end. This was through the MBLC, yeah, MBLC, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. The library group. MLC. MBLC. 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 That's for the library group. Okay. And so <laughs> now, hopefully, the group is still staying together because you've got to lobby the legislature for additional funding still. Yeah, I mean, that's our that's our goal. I mean, we before we decided not to go into any, yeah. anything before the June 1st vote, and now we're going to start a second phase. That's going to be a tougher. Yeah, no, I'm just thrilled to say what they did. I mean, that's yeah. that's it's nothing that to sneeze at. That huge, I mean, huge work on your part and and, and the teams and, and Joe and Natalie and it's awesome. Yeah, it's no, awesome no. when government works. I'd rather get the money that Amherst is getting, but you know, I saw that too. I was like, wait, a minute, turn that over. One point seven. It's a bigger project. Yeah, I get that. Forty-nine million. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Um, you can build two sewers for that, Trevor. Yeah, Trevor, right. <laughs> Trevor, I know you want to go, but I think it's really important that um, just just uh, shout out. We the M, the MMA wants us to make sure we reach out about school funding, please, please. Yeah. yeah. Um, the rural aid yep. bill that we wrote. That's really critical that we get that out. And um, there's a lot of communication about support letters. And yeah, and I, you know, uh, so we're, we're we getting mean, a lot. We're getting you, a lot. When you say we, what do you mean? Us, well, in my, group, my group, but uh, I'm hoping that you all will make some phone calls just to just to Elena or, J or Jared and just let them know that, you know, of course, we're really supporting this. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I can send an email. Or email. Yeah. Great. I mean, who does this need to be done by? Well, tomorrow. 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 <laughs> it's in the next few days. They're, they started the conferencing. And how long have you known this girl? Yes. What did you know? And what did you know? And okay. Since yesterday. <laughs> Come on. I, I'm on top of it. I'm going to give you a Nixon test here. That's right. <laughs> yes. This is a mission she had for years. No, I know. No, it's a great no. It's a good mission. Well, it's because it's, it is her new task. And I've you know, been reaching out to all different people. and. It, and it, it's frustrating it for us because Joe and Nally are the ones that sponsor these bills and the ones that they are, fight they for us. Teams. They are really amazing. So it's like kind of worthless for us to put a lot of effort into harassing Natalie and Joe because we work really hard. They're, they're the ones that instigate right. all this. So they call your senator, they're like, they're way ahead. <laughs> they know. They, they so do you know, know anybody like in Lyme or yeah. another town? Get them to call because yeah. this is really important that okay. we call different legislators and you know call Mark if you know anybody that you know Paul Mark is usually really good but guess what he needs to hear my phone calls too so yeah. mm -hmm. and and the school aid you know we've got to just keep bumping it up so and this is sixty three percent more aid on the table so this is huge for us yeah. okay so. Okay, perfect. So, motion to adjourn. Well, I just want to say one more thing about, about mosquitoes. Oh, motion to adjourn. I'm going to say one thing about that before she says anything else about mosquitoes. I'm going to go learn what I'm supposed to be doing tomorrow at yeah. the MSA conference. Oh, thank you. Where are we going? Well, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to leave at a quarter of six. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's going to be a great. That's a great time. It is. Those are very good. Absolutely. It's really worth it. Yeah. I know. Oh, I know. I was going. Thank yeah. You. Um. That's good. Well, no. All right. Now you can talk about mosquitoes. No, just really quick. Ticks. Ticks. Travel. I got ticks. Tick we we have. Yeah. Did you get it off? I did. I did. I don't know how long it was on, but it got me pretty good. So I sent it. To I like called Carolyn. I'm like, what do I do? Oh, and she's like, oh, you need to. She gave me the link. So I went on the website and uh, it was super easy. You bring up tickreport.com. It already knows I'm in Deerfield. It gave me the $35 credit. It tests for everything for 15 bucks. I put it in a stamped envelope in a Ziploc bag and shipped it off to Amherst. Yeah. 
So I'll find out in a day or so whether yeah. I'm going to make it. Are you going to get my DCOs? Exactly. Sorry. I'm feeling okay, but you never know. I know, I can see it. If I start slurring my words. And, you know. Well, the, the thing is, you've got to get them tested. And I just want yeah. to say, so far, the mosquitoes that um, John has been, um, our mosquito guy has been tracking in Deerfield have been low numbers, which is consistent across the state because spring was chilly and, and dry. dry. So that doesn't mean that it's not going to change over the yeah. summer because of yeah. high heat, yeah. but and it depends on how much rain. But right now, we're doing really well, and there is no disease load in the town of Deerfield. Right. So and we do have a meeting to discuss the lease tomorrow. Okay. Um, if, if Lisa and I are going to meet with a bunch of people and Karen can go with I'm, I'm going to try to make it. Okay. So she's got a part. We were it took us about two days to figure out but that would give us more informed uh, I didn't have a document because there's a requirement for it. M D A R and Lisam. Okay. So lease for those mosquitoes. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Milchie, I. Thanks. Sir McDaniel, I. Carolyn, that's I. Thank you. I love that. We don't know that.